الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أي لحبة في الله The question arises especially when we witness a lot of harm that's been done over the many years may Allah forgive us forgive us all and bless us with ikhlas with thabat ala sunnat al-nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ilm wa fiqh fi al-deen the question arises is it for the layman is it for the awam the general people to involve themselves in issues of takfir, declaring another Muslim to be an apostate, tabdir, declaring another Muslim to be an innovator, or tafsir, declaring another Muslim to be a fasik or a wicked individual. Is this for all of us to get involved in this? Should we all have a place in here? Is it really a democratic forum for us all to debate these issues out, these masayil laqiq? that have a hukum attached to them, meaning these are very de detailed and intricate matters with regards to the religion, meaning they're advanced matters, and they, are they for everyone to involve themselves uh, in and to make rulings based upon that? Meaning, for example, if you hear that so-and-so was at masjid such and such, should you, as an individual who hasn't studied much, is not even a talib al ilm <coughs> should you have a, uh, should you have, do you have the right in Islam to make a hukum on that individual? Can you say, well, I saw brother so-and-so sitting with so-and-so, he is a mubtadi'a, he's an innovator. Or, for example, this is a true story, I saw sister so-and-so, and or sisters came to the house of one particular sister. This was related to me. A truthful story happened in Saudi Arabia with individuals from the West, of course. May Allah forgive us and forgive them and guide us and guide them. They said, sister, we haven't seen you around and we've seen you with sister so-and-so. Several times. You know, are you a proper Salafi? And they use the term proper Salafi. May Allah forgive us and forgive them and guide us and guide them. The point I'm mentioning is not to make fun of an accent that I'm not good at imitating. And it's not to make fun of our brothers and sisters. But it's to highlight an incredibly, incredibly important issue. Is that, and just to make it, so you don't have to listen to the whole video, but I'm going to give you the dalil, some dalil qawiyya jiddan from the ulama. Mutaqaddimin illa mutaakhirin. That it is not the place of the layman. And think of all the problems that could have been avoided. Qadr Allah wa masha fa'al. But hopefully we can stop some of this fitna from continuing and in this time. If only we realize that most of us don't have a place in talking about these affairs, talking about the issues of. As they say, general ta'adil, you know, criticizing and praising individuals. Most of us don't have a share in that. And we shouldn't involve ourselves in that. And the ulama, alhamdulillah, especially now in the past few years, there's been several books in Arabic that have come out where some of our ulama, like Sheikh, of course, Sheikh Abdul Masan al Abad, Allama, Imam. I think Sheikh Rabi has also written some things and he's, he's been dealing with this as well. Um, some other mashayikh, Sheikh Ibrahim Raheli has written a, an excellent treatise also uh, dealing with some of this issue of the problem of people making kathrat al tabdi and speaking when they don't have a right to do so and making a hajr of one another without the duwabit, the principles and the right to do so and also Sheikh Muhammad Ali Imam in Yemen one of our mashayikh from Yemen as well has written a fantastic book Al Ibana, which also deals with this as well. But unfortunately, we don't listen. We read and understand and hear what we want. We don't really, really 
even though some of us say we take from the ulama, we only take that means we take from a few whom we deem to be the major scholars or we deem to be the only important ones. Their voice is khalasat al But this is not really from uh, Islamic adab. But in fact, when the ulama speak, whoever has the strongest evidence, if you have the ability to look at evidence, if you don't, okay, you can make your taqlid there. But if you do have some talib al-ilm, you're a talib al-ilm, because we see this from students of knowledge who just, who sometimes just blindly follow one particular sheikh or two. Instead of looking at these evidence based on the Messiah and Mia when they've had training, they've had Islamic training. So it's upon us to study. So I'm going to share with you some beautiful statements. And this is from our Sheikh, Sheikh Ibrahim Raheli. He compiled this. But before you get scared off, because some people, they have issue with our Sheikh, Sheikh Ibrahim. And we love him to the extent that he holds on to the Sunnah. And we dislike any mistakes. We don't follow him in any, any mistakes he's made. But I learned a lot from the Sheikh, and I love the Sheikh. I benefit tremendously still from his books and his lectures and so forth. So the point being here, uh, let's look at the evidences here. So the Shaykh, Hafidullah Ta'ala, mentioned the statement of Imam Nawawi. Rahmatullah alayhi, Imam Nawawi. Qali Imam Nawawi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Thumma innahu innama ya'maru wa yanha من كان عالم بما يأمر وينهى وذلك يختلف باختلاف شيء فإذا كان من الواجبات الظاهرة ومحرمات مشهورة كالصلاة والصيام والزنا والخمر ونحوها فكل مسلمين علماء بها So the Imam Nawawi said, رحمة الله عليه said in the beginning of this statement he said that uh, commanding the good, commandments and prohibitions for those people who are uh, knowledgeable about those, about what they are, a person must be knowledgeable, knowledgeable about what they are commanding and what they are prohibiting. And we, we already know this, uh, inshallah ta'ala, we should be aware that Amr bin Ma'roof and Nahil al-Munkar that the Qur'an speaks about and that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam has spoke about in a hadith. This is for, you You have to have fiqh in this. You have to know the maslaha and the mafsada. When to speak, when to not speak. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam showed us that there was levels. In the hadith of, uh, uh, of uh, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu or Abu Sayyid al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu qala samitu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam a yaqul Whoever sees a munkar, then change it with his hand. If he's unable to do so, for the, then with his uh, tongue, speak out against it. If he's unable to do so, then with his uh, with his heart, and that's the weakest of faith. We know this hadith. And this hadith shows us that there's different levels, and not everybody should be involved in every single level, and it depends on the particular place and the time and your position. Many, many factors are included in here, and this is not the place nor time to get into details about this, but let's continue on with what Imam Noah we said, that you have to have knowledge about what you're commanding to and what you're prohibiting. And, and then he said, so then, therefore, if, this not, if it is about the wajibat, those clear uh, commandments or clear, clearly things that are, are wajib and clear things that are haram and, and that are well known that they're haram. And then he mentioned, like salat. Salat is clearly everyone, every Muslim knows. They have to pray five times a day. Even non-Muslims know this. Well, siyam and fasting. Was zina, and we know we have to leave zina. We know that that's haram. Every Muslim knows this. Wa khamar, and every Muslim knows that they shouldn't drink alcohol. And 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 other than this, every Muslim, every Muslim is an is an alim with regards to this, meaning that they have knowledge about those things. They know that those basic things are clearly haram in Islam, and those basic obligations are clearly oblig <coughs> obligations in Islam. وَإِنْ كَانَ مِنْ دَقَائِقِ الْأَفْعَالِ 
وأقوال ومما يتعلق بالاجتهاد لم يكون للعوام مدخل فيه ولا لهم إنكاره بل ذلك للعلماء beautiful statement of Imam Nawawi so please take it from Imam Nawawi Imam Nawawi said after mentioning the other portion of the statement he said so if it is with regards to those specific, those specific detailed issues detailed actions and statements and those things related to ijtihad those ijtihadat those issues of uh, jurisprudent reasoning or you know t making a, 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 a ruling based on the evidence which may not be you may not have a clear text from so it requires ijtihad this is not for the general Muslims there's there's no place for the for the general Muslims in this they don't have a place or a say in this nor can they make or deny or negate this rather this is for the ulama letting us know what it requires elm and fiqh and it requires these things from the scholars and those people who have knowledge about these issues when it comes to speaking about individuals speaking about people uh, and making these types of rulings and, and in general rulings in the Sharia if it's not clear as Imam Noah said related to clearly things that are clearly every Muslim knows though that it's wajib or that it's Muharram then those uh, specific details don't speak about it stay out of it because you only cause more wickedness than the good that you thought you the good you intended you intended good I know brothers they intended good when they it make empty hand of people when they go to people they might have intended good some of them that they really believe that this was an issue they needed to bring up with people who don't even speak the Arabic language what's your position on so-and-so Sheikh so-and-so who lives in a village in Yemen what's your position we need to know brother I've never heard of him I I, I don't know Arabic I don't know Masarana. this is a real story Ikhwan this is real I know a brother he used to be Sufi then he was a takfiri. Alhamdulillah, he's on the sunnah now. And this particular brother told me his story, what happened to him when he came to the sunnah. Because I knew him for many years in Seattle. And Alhamdulillah, he went to another state. He embraced to mess with me, kitabi with sunnah. And this is the kind of treatment he, re he received from some of his brothers. And what is the shahid? They didn't have knowledge. They did not have knowledge. They did not have fiqh. No doubt in my mind that they're not even students of knowledge when they when they were doing this actions. Because this is not befitting of the Talib al -Ibn. The second statement which show which illustrates for us this very important uh, topic that it's not for the awam is the st statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Rahmatullah alayhi, Shaykh al-Islam. وَقَدْ يَنْحُونَ عَنَ الْمُجَادَلَةِ وَالْمُنَاظِرَةِ إِذَا كَانَ الْمُنَاظِرِ ضَعِيفِ الْعِلْمِ بِالْحُجَّةِ وَالْجَوَابِ الشُّبَهِ فَيُخَافَ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يُفْسِدَهُ ذَلِكَ مُضِلٌّ كَمَا يَنْهَى الضَّعِيفِ فِي مُقَاتِلَتِهِ أَنْ يُقَاتِلْ عَلَى جَنْ قَوِيًّا مِنْ عُلُوجِ الْكُفَّارِ Okay, so we'll just give you the main uh, importance of this statement with regards to what we're talking about. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, and, it is pro uh, and they have prohibited it for debating and arguing if the person debating <coughs> is weak in knowledge and knowledge with delil and in responding to the doubts Therefore, it, we are, they are scared that he will cause more harm and, uh, and he will be affected by the misguided one. What's an example, just to make this clear, a picture for us? For example, if you are a new Muslim, or even if you're a Muslim, you've been Muslim for a time, and you haven't studied, 
Maybe you've done some little studies like this, but don't go and get in debates with people, even if they're Ashari, even if they're Sufi, even if they're whatever. Don't try to convince them if you don't have the tools. As the Salaf used to say, al ilm huwa silah. And this is also attributed to uh, Ibn al-Qayyum. And I heard uh, Imam uh, Sheikh uh, Alama, uh, Sheikh Abdul Masin al-Abad say this in the Haram. al ilm huwa silah. The uh, knowledge is a sword, it's a weapon. So if your weapon is da'if, your weapon is, is, is crooked, it's broke, it's cracked, it can't hold it, you can't even hold it, it's, it's what, what good is it gonna do? You're gonna strike and it's gonna break. It's gonna cause you more harm, because then that person's gonna be mad and knock you out. This is a very, uh, <laughs> And, and a, uh, a mythal, I, I'm just trying to give you, or, or some sort of a, a, a picture that is that is comprehensible, uh, comprehensible for us. The point being, a habitifillah, that you shouldn't speak about those not, those issues if you don't have an you haven't studied. And even if you studied a little bit, or even you studied a lot, maybe you got a few years, maybe you got five, ten years. It's still not for everyone to get into debates and discussions, and 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 and, and because. You may not have the be grounded in the in the in the evidences, and also you may not be able to repel their shabahat. So if you speak with an ashadi, and you give him some text, and he makes ta'wil of those texts, and you don't know how to respond to his ta'wil, what are you going to do? You're going to look very foolish. Maybe the people there will say, "Look at those Salafis, those people from Ahl Sunnah. They probably won't even consider you Ahl Sunnah." But they'll say they don't even know. Uh, they can't even answer this. Look at how our sheikh, our mufti so-and-so, who came from Dara Alun, look at how he tore him up in, in argumentation. This is what they're going to say. And then you might even have doubt. He might even affect you. You thought you were firm on that, but when he came with that shabahat, it, it went to your heart. And it sat with you. Until you leave the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi next thing you know, we see you with a green, big, huge green turban and sitting with... Sheikh, one of the Naqshbandi sheikhs or something like this and, and making strange dhikr and adhkar and doing all kind of strange things وَعِيَادِ مِنْ اللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ عَبْتِ فِي اللَّهِ الْعِلْمُ وَسِلَاهِ And the final statement is from one of our mashayikh, the Mu'asireen Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan, Alama Hafiz Allah Ta'ala, he said and this makes it very clear in terms which is very relevant for us right now لَا يَنْبَغِي لطلبة العلم المبتدئين وغيرهم من العامة أن يشتغلوا بالتبديع والتفسير لأن ذلك أمر خطير وهم ليس عندهم علم ودراية في هذا الموضوع وأيضا هذا يحدث عداوة عداوة وبغضاء بينهم فالواجب عليهم الانش الاشتغال بطلب العلم وكفى السنتهم اما لا فائده فيه بل فيه مضره عليهم وعلى غيرهم beautiful beautiful statement i'm just going to translate it and that's sufficient Sheikh Salah bin Fuzan, half of the law ta'ala said, which is so applicable to the fitna, and I'm sure the question was asked with regards to the fitna that goes around around the world don't think this is just in in the west but everywhere, and I've traveled to many countries, I've seen it in, with my eyes in Indonesia. Or I know students of knowledge from Indonesia and sheikhs in Indonesia and the fitness there. And I've seen it in Ethiopia with my own eyes. These brothers support sheikh so-and-so. These brothers support the mashayikh in Medina. And, and the adawa, the enmity. What does Sheikh Salim al-Fusan say to deal with this stuff? Especially for the general Muslims and the beginning students of knowledge. He said, it is not permissible for the beginning students of knowledge or other than them from the general Muslims, meaning the laymen, to busy themselves or, you know, to have any part in uh, calling people innovators, tabdiyah, what tafsik and calling people wicked facets. Because that is a very dangerous matter or it's a very serious matter. And they do not have knowledge or the cognizance, cognizance fee in this issue. Also, this makes enmity and hatred between them. Have, do we witness this? 
It is therefore it's an obligation upon them to busy themselves with seeking knowledge and controlling their tongues. Be quiet on those things which have no benefit. Rather, in those issues is harm for them and for other than them. Is this not the case? How many people do you know who don't know how to pray properly? Do not possibly read Fatiha properly, and we have real stories about this as well, and we've seen, witnessed some of these things. Do not know many uh, aspects of the religion, and they spend ample time speaking about supposedly Ahl bidah And this is a true story, I'll, I'll end with this. When I first came to Medina, I remember uh, a brother who I don't, Wallahu Alam, I don't think he's Salafi, but he, uh, you know, used to sit with a lot of Salafi Mashaikh, but then he spoke kind of ill about some of the Mashaikh. But I remember what he said, which was a very slap in the face, especially to what we see uh, happening in, around the world, in, in the West especially. He said, it was mentioned to him about a brother who was, had, it's gone, or he was very, um, very knowledgeable, supposedly, in Jarwa Ta'adil. But he doesn't read Fatiha properly. Ahabati fillah. This actually cannot really, Wallahu alam, if this could actually be true. Not that the story is not true, but that the person really has it gone. Meaning that the person has, if they don't read Fatiha properly, they probably don't know Arabic and they probably haven't sat with the scholars and there's probably a lot of things we can infer from that statement. But what we have to look at Ahabit Fillah, and the point being, is if he's Jahil of Fatiha, what kind of knowledge does he have about Jarwat Adil, a very intricate, detailed science? Because he saw on the website, he knows a few principles that have been translated for him, and sometimes translated and misrepresenting those principles. But he is etkan jarwat adil la yumkin ya hebatifillah. So this shows us the danger of getting involved in issues we shouldn't involve ourselves with, especially uh, even beginning students of knowledge. Not just beginning students of knowledge, as Imam Fozan said, but also even students of knowledge that have. A level of knowledge. And this one thing I benefited from our Shaykh, Shaykh Ibrahim Rahayli, Hafidullah Ta'ala, in his book, Mokif Ahl Sunnah, Mokif Ahl Sunnah, Min Ahl Bida Wa Lahwa. The Shaykh, when we studied this book with him, one of the things we benefited, he mentioned three things about the person uh, speaking about the Mukhalif. The person who differs, or the person from Ahl Bida, or a person who differs with the truth as went astray. He said, the, the ulama, he said, even the ulama, not all of them 